Hi, um, thanks for having me. Um, Mr. Urbana, or Mina, I'm sorry. Ms. Um, Bobenko, Mr. Senior, members of the Michael Jackson Tribune Portrait, children, friends. 42 years ago, a young black boy from a small town in Indiana sat in this very room. It was a different time then, a time when I suppose the American civil rights movements were trying to gain freedom from oppression. It was also a time when a new generation of post-war Americans were growing up, the sons of soldiers who had freed prisoners from the Tyranny prison camps in Europe. And it was a time when all of Europe was filled with profound and abiding gratitude to the American people. As Eli Weissel, who was a survivor of the Jewish Holocaust, said in a speech to the White House in 1999, gratitude is what defines humanity. It is the very essential part of the human being. And gratitude is what we should have today for this young black American boy. His name was Michael Jackson, somebody I'm privileged to call my friend. Somebody who often stood alone to fend for the children of the world, for the destitute, for the victims of disease and injustice. Michael was very troubled by the suffering he saw in the world and even more to the indifference to it. You know, his very first words to me when we met were, thank you very much for helping the people of Africa. There were no Excuse me. There were no urgent races of Michael, no pomp or circumstance, and his only concern was for the lives of other people who lived in a different continent than the one in both of us were born. I had been to Africa, I had seen the devastation of the plague of HIV at first hand, and when we discussed it, there were often tears in his eyes, and he said we should do something together for the people of Africa. He planned to hold a great concert in Rwanda, and we would fly there together in his private plane and down to see his great friend, then also Nelson Mandela. Sadly, these events were not to happen, and the world lost one of its great humanitarian leaders. In his speech, Eli Basil also talked about the words indifferent. He said to be indifferent to the suffering of the world is what makes human beings inhuman. Indifference is something that benefits the aggressor, never his victim, whose pain is magnified when he feels forgotten by the world. Michael Jackson also felt that pain, not just for the hungry children in the world, but for himself, when the people of America remained indifferent to him, to the injustice that was perpetrated upon him, making him a, visible, a virtual prisoner in his own land, causing him to fly to the Middle East, and eventually defined solitude in Ireland, my home. What an irony is that somebody who cares so much about the rest of humanity was rejected by his own. It is a pain he felt deeply. On one occasion, he discussed it with me, but mostly he did not want to talk about it, and I never opened those painful memories, being like him, exiles beyond the norm. Michael Jackson was never indifferent. He brought light where there was darkness, hope where there was despair. He never turned away from cruelty where he could give compassion. We've just started a new century, a new millennium. The first 10 years have seen some of the most brutal years this planet has ever encountered. The century started with terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center and on the Pentagon. These actions dragged this great nation into conflicts in Iran and Afghanistan. There have been wars in over 20 countries which have cast a dark shadow on humanity. So much violence, so much pain. If there's one thing we can do today to preserve Michael Jackson's memory, and that is not to remain indifferent to the suffering we see all around us in the world. There are times I know when I myself feel that God has abandoned this world. The terrible earthquake in Haiti, where bodies had to be cut from the buildings by axles. The funeral, excuse me, undertakers of Zambia, a coffin makers were banging nails and wood late into the night. In the streets of Northern Ireland, where throats were cut 
just for pronouncing her word in a beer bottle wrong in the wrong accent. I've lived in Baghdad. I myself have been a prisoner of Saddam Hussein. I carry the war wounds of Northern Ireland. And I say to you today that there is a God who looks down on all this wrong. And he brought us Michael Jackson here to help solve it. Over 70 years ago, a ship of a human cargo of a thousand Jews was turned away from the port of St. Louis back to Nazi Germany. That ship was already on the shores of the United States and was sent back and left people to fend to themselves with the fate of a dictator. This happened in America, a country with the greatest democracy, the most generous of all the new nations in modern history. It is happening again today, where bombing and terrorization of innocent children on foreign shores are happening. Don't let this happen. Stand up for the things that Michael Jackson stood for. Help to wipe out injustice, to combat disease, and try and save the planet we all live in. What will be the legacy of Michael Jackson in the years to come? How will it be remembered by generations yet unborn? Let us be grateful to God that he sent us for time and age to live amongst us, and let us not be indifferent to the wrongs we see around us. If Michael ever wanted one thing to do that would make him happy as he looks down at us today, it would not be to turn away from the victims of oppression, of aggression. And if we're ever in any doubt to know what to do or how to act in terms of the planet or of suffering in the world, we should just think for a moment, what would Michael Jackson do? Thank you.